Hello? Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anna and Shane and Leslie. I appreciate that. Uh, I do apologize for being late. Evidently, I didn't do the calculations correct on the time adjustment, so I, I thought I had another hour. I apologize. Um, but let's uh, go ahead and get started. I don't want to waste any more of your time. I um, wanted to share with the uh, Moodle community the online resource center that we've been developing really as a conduit between uh, K-12 education and higher education. Yeah, and um, as we're going through this, I'm really interested in the communities and everything that you guys know about how you're supporting collaboration, if any of you are working in a structure uh, where you're trying to connect uh, K-12 grades with the higher education and and how you're supporting that uh, so that's what uh, that's our starting point I'm from Arizona State University uh, in Tempe Arizona where uh, we're about hundred and eight degrees and uh, yesterday was 88 so we've had a cool wave so with uh, no further ado we'll go ahead and get started uh, please feel free to if you have any questions post them in the chat any comments kinds of things I'm, I'm more than open to that and would love to have a, a bit of a conversation here. So the Online Resource Center uh, was created, well here's just for our goals for today, sorry, um, is that I want you to have an understanding of what the Online Resource Center is, the design, features, and tools, uh, ad identifying and getting your input on various var on variations of online collaboration and, and what that means to you um, I know from my experience from working with multiple programs, K-12 and higher ed, uh, it's a little bit difficult sometimes to get folks to completely engage in that, so uh, we can exchange ideas on that. Uh, those are the strategies. Also, uh, for other ways of supporting school reform and how we can use these online environments as a conduit for that. As in addition to collaboration, we use the Online Resource Center uh, as a for place for uh, teachers, administrators, leaders, K-12 K in higher ed for professional learning. And the Online Resource Center, and the, and the reason we're sharing it here is that it's a mashup between Moodle and Drupal. And so we're actually <clears throat> using Drupal and I, I mean Moodle in a couple different ways. Um, the first the screen that you see now is actually the first community. So we call them communities and then we're also referring to online courses, modules, do a variety of things. Uh, but we went with Moodle because first of all uh, we are a U.S. Department of Education funded grant that works with high need districts across the state of Arizona and we're looking for creating an environment that's sustainable and that's absolutely key for us so uh, we needed resources that um, if we eventually have to pass some cost on to our school district partners that we can keep that to a minimum. So Moodle works out well for that, Drupal, and uh, we host it um, currently on the university's web hosting services. So it's a needs-based solution, meaning we have different programs within our grant that work all the way from uh, pre-service the teachers, students that are freshmen and sophomores, uh, actually before they even go into the College of Education. Then they go from there into the College of Education's programs, then they graduate, we support them while they're out in their induction year, and then we support them with professional development after that. Um, and so from all those different program coordinators that are part of the grant, we uh, needed to find different solutions for them. So very much this mashup we've created is all based on addressing those, those needs. We needed low bandwidth in terms of space, um, in terms of um, all kinds of issues, again, because we work with a lot of rural areas and there's uh, constant issues there with bandwidth. We needed high flexibility. That's one of the reasons, particularly with Moodle, because we needed to be able to modify and adapt it to meet the needs and the different types of collaboration that our folks needed. <clears throat> and that sort of goes over there. So when we were talking about online collaboration and then I started thinking there and the next piece I really started thinking about was 
um, not what is online, is it variations of online collaboration or support for online co collaboration? And I, and I know that that seems like a spinning of words there, but I was really curious in what your take is. The first one seems to me variations, meaning we're supporting just the collaboration, um, specific kind of online, but really what we're doing is wanting to enhance any kind of collaboration and just using the online as a venue for that. Any any thoughts on that, the difference between the, the first and the second title there? Okay, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys are still hearing me. So I decided to go with the the idea of the variations of support for collaboration online. Okay, great. I'm hearing from some of you folks that you're trying to to read it. Um, and I agree, Leslie, really fo focuses more on the collaboration. So what we tried to lay out is is how what what is that collaboration and how do we what are the different ways of looking at it? <laughs> okay, no worries, Trish. Uh, so the first one I think is a pretty basic. And, and when I first started thinking of this idea, I, I started to think about levels. And it, you know, it's really not levels because one seems if you have, try to level it, then one's higher than the other. It really is based on need again. So we had a need for communicating, for sharing information and resources. And that, to me, seems like a very basic way of collaborating. Um, and often what I would get is, well, why don't we just use a website if you want to just post information? But um, in the structures that we end, what I wanted to encourage was multiple people to, to be able to post and take ownership of the communities. So um, in the minute when I share my screen, I'm going to show you some different communities uh, that are in it. But we have many that there's people from 14, 15 different institutions that are sharing information. So that first one, basically sharing basic information. And then I thought, so uh, what's, what's, the, what's the next level up? Um, and one is, I was thinking, supporting the online ongoing dialogue. So we have asynchronous, synchronous, archived information. Uh, if many of you, if any of you work with higher education, um, it's a little bit of a different uh, beast in working with some of the faculty in terms of what they're used to doing in terms of um, collaboration processes. And when one of our projects we were supporting, was actually we had folks from three universities and about mm, five community colleges collaborating to redefine and rebuild courses. And they were doing that through streams of email, which um, you all know can be cumbersome. First of all, if somebody forgets to copy a message, then that whole thread can get lost. Hard to archive when you have new folks coming in. Um, hard to get them to get caught up on the collective think that has gone on. And so part of this collaboration then was this ongoing dialogue that anybody could join at any time and would have that record of it. That was a cultural shift for a lot of people to think about going from email to uh, this discussion community and sharing a community where um, it wasn't necessarily um, in this what they were used to, which was the, the online email system. So we also are trying to build an environment that supports that online dialogue that's outside of an email system. Uh, I just want to say thanks, Martin, for sharing uh, your, your input on the different types of collaboration as well. Um, I think that's good. And it says, I, say, I like the second, but it does and play that there are other channels of collaboration as well. And I think there are um, collaborating online and such. I mean, face-to-face. Uh, -face. So if we go to the next one, which the third kind of idea is collaborative development. To me, in terms of what our, our needs were, is this is the trickiest one, but this is the one that's the most important. And if you folks are using just different tools, uh, I, I agree with you, Jennifer. Jennifer is saying collaboration in and of itself is a paradigm shift. That is uh, such a true statement. 
We've been pushing it in K-12 for a long time, coming out of the autonomous classroom, and now we're trying to move that up into higher ed and getting them to come out of the autonomous classroom. And, and I agree, Jennifer. Um, that's a big shift. And, and for our needs, we really needed to have spaces where they could co-develop. And we needed to have something that was broader scope than Google. We, we use Google Docs. Uh, they use that for when they're actually co-creating um, a particular document, and, and they still use that. But we needed a space, again, where versions could be shared, where people that are outside the general scope of the group could come in. So we went with uh, Moodle again because of the core structure. Uh, and, and actually just getting folks to put content into that uh, was quite challenging. But again, we have the core structure of the documents and so that they could actually work within that space and co-develop and give feedback. Now, one of the pieces that's really nice about Moodle um, that you all know is that in terms of collaboration and data collection is Moodle reports give us a tremendous amount of data. And since we are grant funded, data is king for us. So um, that's another piece. It helps us all along the way to track and keep that, that data and that content and pass that on. So if we look at different ways of supporting and meeting those needs, we really had a need for um, these needs that were stated for these collaboration professional learning. We had very technology tools and then what were the solutions to those. So this I call my bunny ear uh, graph here and really it just describes how within the online resource center we had these needs coming in and you can just see that they're various needs. Technology tools, we had all the collaborators, we have our Department of Education in collaboration, the U.S. Department of Ed, we have, again, the community colleges, the colleges, the case 12 districts, and we're really trying to use Moodle as creatively as we can to support that uh, all their needs for collaboration and, and sharing um, and all the different contexts of collaboration. <clears throat> so really, if we look at the information sharing, and I will tell you I'm, I'm a little bit of a novice to Adobe um, here, so I there are some websites that um, I want to show you as well, so that you can get a feel for what these communities look like. So I'm going to talk about him here theoretically, and then I'm going to take you to our online resource center, so I can show you what they look like in practice. So if we look at the first line, we have what we call communities, and that was for that sort of first level of collaboration, sharing information. They're restricted environments, they have a shared calendar, etc. We use them for communicating with our school districts, but the college also uses them um, internally for communicating um, with their different partners within the college. So we have internal collaborations going on, we have cross uh, organizational collaborations going on, um, and then in the districts we have those going on as well. Um, then we have uh, another one, which is a common source of information for different members. That's looking basically at the same kind of thing. And one is a location um, to access information from a variety of programs. We have a lot of partnerships across uh, the college with our school districts, and they kept asking, asking us, can't there be one place that we can go to to get all this information? So what I'm going to share with you right now is I'm going to share with you um, the, the space uh, that we call the Online Resource Center. Um, and then I'm going to share a little bit about how we're collaborating, but I really do want to uh, get some input from you into different ways that you're using it uh, to collaborate. Um, as I'm going into this, I also want to tell you that we did choose Moodle as our system. Um, one of the reasons was many of the districts, the K-12 districts within uh, the United States, uses Moodle for a lot of different purposes. So as we were picking a system that had the most uh, bandwidth across, uh, that is one piece that we wanted. I wanted to be able to show um, and to share with them as an environment that they were already sort of familiar with. So what I'm going to go to right now, you're going to see a quick shift, is that... Um, I'm going to share my screen with you, and um, let's see.
Hi everyone, sorry I'm just talking to Heidi in a private chat trying to sort out the sound. Um, That's the one, Heidi. Yep, so about that. Can you, can you hear there we me go. Now? Oh, okay. I apologize, everyone. I'm not sure we had a, a glitch. Maybe it was a, a solar flare or something. I think I'll say that it was a solar flare. Um, so what I was trying to show to you is my, um, and let me get back into the space. So what I wanted to show to you was the environment itself um, and how we're using it and regarding uh, the way that we're mashing up using Drupal and Moodle together in multiple ways. So this first space right here is the center that everybody comes into. Um, and this is Moodle, and you can see that. Um, I came into a legacy system. We're using Moodle 1.9. Uh, we are going to be moving over to 2.0 as we're changing hosts. Um, but this is a new space for us, and, and I'm thinking that we need to do some reform in this space too. So any ideas people have? I'm more than uh, glad to hear. So we use this for a calendar for uh, everybody within our group. We have about 4,000 members that uh, are members have memberships here. Uh, we've created some um, wraparounds with Drupal and that these are additional functionalities. This actually, the resource button takes you right to the resource section as we have it implemented in communities. We have calendar. Um, and again, using the different pieces, and then our group has come up with my calendar because people belong to multiple communities, and um, and they need to be able to see the calendar from all their events. So what we've done is because we on the right hand side of mine, and the and the print is small, and I apologize for that, but we have a list of all the school systems that we partner with. And so we create communities for them. One of them is the Chinle Unified School District, which is on the Navajo Nation in the northeastern part of Arizona. And it's a wonderful way for us to be able to share a variety of different resources with them. We have one main community, and that includes professional development, any things that are for the whole district. We also then have created sub-communities. One example is the Chinle District Partnership Community, which is when we communicate with the leadership, we have a way of sharing our, an agenda, which is a Google Doc, so we are trying to use that as an integration tool. Uh, and we have all the different content. Again, we're trying to archive. Um, we're trying to get them, we're trying to get them to, um, to collaborate with us in the adding the content. And right now they're being mostly receivers and that is an ongoing issue for us, and one of the things maybe we can bring up in question and answer time is, is how do you uh, encourage people to come into the environments and share? We are using the calendar here, as you can see that. We have an environment that um, my tech team has created, which uh, I'm the director of technology for the two uh, U.S. Department of Education grants, so we support a lot of folks with uh, PD just in time, um, and so one of the ways we're using Moodle is just for this, is to sharing these resources, taking information in, asking for them. So here is a way for us to easily get our just-in-time resources out to everybody uh, and, um, and to actually get feedback from them on, on what they need. So you see some of our first uh, up here, we have a directory of face-to-face. We have just ways for them to share with us what it is that they need from us. Um, and this is that first level again of collaboration, which is the sharing of information back and forth. I'm going to um, go back to the PowerPoint now so that we can uh, talk a little bit right there. So that was just a simple way of sharing, of information sharing. Um, Again, we're having issues with uh, people wanting to contribute back, and I'm, I'm wondering if anybody else, and they're in the collaborative space, uh, if they've come up with any particular strategies that are working for them and getting them to uh, put the content, uh, post their own content. 
maybe that's something we can post in the discussion board. We've, uh, of course, tried to make things that are meaningful for them. We know that if it's relevant, um, then they'll be more supportive or they'll be more uh, contributive in nature. Um, and so we're working on those strategies. A second way then that we're supporting that sort of second way of collaboration from information sharing was that ongoing dialogue. And here we have environments. We've used the Moodle spaces as follow-up to face-to-face -face professional development, and that's been really helpful. Uh, we have conferences that we hold, and we're using it as a follow-up to that so they can access their content anytime. They have the discussion boards. The actual presenters can go in and post their own content uh, so that it's not just my staff doing it, but that everybody can have ownership that it is a collaboration to add to that space. Um, we, um, so th it's just this idea of how do you support folks going um, in that ongoing time frame. We're working with a consortium. Uh, there's a big uh, initiative in the United States called Common Core, which for some of you who have had a national curriculum for a while may seem um, behind, but we're working on the, the Common Core Standards, which is an initiative of common standards across the nation. And in Arizona, uh, they're just now implementing that. And so we're supporting districts to have ongoing dialogue with each other on how to keep going and, and supporting each other over time. One uh, example of that, and I'm going to again share my screen with you in hopes it goes smoother than it did the last time. Oh, there we go. Um, and this will let me show you a different structure. So with that one consortium, they have groups from 13 different school systems. Um, within the state of Arizona, we have city school systems. Uh, we actually have K-12 school systems and K-8 school systems. So uh, within a, a range of 20 miles, you could have uh, 10 to 15 different school systems, which seems um, a bit crazy, but that's the way the structure is out here. And so there's a group of 13 of those that have come together and said, you know, we're all trying to accomplish the same thing, let's try to do it together, and they didn't have a space for collaborating. And so I've worked with them, and again, just to develop some simple spaces where they can keep the dialogue ongoing. They, they meet each other face-to-face -face once a month, um, but they wanted space to post resources, to share resources back and forth, and it's interesting, one of the things that we've come across is, and we try to point out to them, that the community is only going to be helpful if you contribute to the community, meaning that the more content that's there, the more reason for people to go back in really trying to seed these environments with content. And so these groups have decided uh, that they have some resources that they just hard-coded in, posted, as you would in No More Moodle, but they're using the forums to try to encourage people to share those resources without vetting. Now, I know many of you are, are far more uh, expert in the use of Moodle in terms of maybe accomplishing some of these in a not so um, convoluted way, and boy, would I be glad to hear about that. But what we're finding is this is a really comfortable environment for the K-12, and what's happening now is the university, the colleges folks are coming into these spaces as well and they're able to share back and forth. So what started out as just to help the K-12 system has really actually proven to be a space where we are supporting that collaboration between the higher ed and the teachers college and how can they support one another and how can we get our teacher candidates um, up to speed way before um, they ever hit the classroom. So in this particular instance, I just went out to them, showed them a basic shell, as you can see, and they as a team decided how they wanted to organize their information and content. Um, again, there's a this has got a higher level of sharing that's going on and that collaboration, but again, I would say it's, it's kind of minimal, and, and we really are looking maybe for some more dynamic messages to give. Um, so I'm hearing that, let's see if I could give an example. So like for instance, uh, here in the district curriculum, we have a K-1 group. It's a K-12 school system. And so here they're sharing, this is a kindergarten person, and right now they're working just with uh, the district office personnel. So here, this one is from uh, Tempe, and it's important to them that they say where they're from. 
And so they're showing, she's showing a grade level map from the one in Tempe. Uh, again, because we have these 13 districts, everybody's trying to do the same thing 13 different times. So the idea behind them is that they could share what they were working on. And I know it seems basic because it's just a discussion board, but I, I have to show you the verbiage here that they actually had to go through quite a long process. If you can read this top section, um, that they had to get the associate superintendents and the directors to all agree in writing as to what the members of the districts could share. So, you know, it's been interesting that we've been able to use in, in this collaboration of higher education, trying to get those uh, faculty members to collaborate with other faculty members and developing of the syllabi um, and their content. And there's, you know, their struggle with being autonomous. Now we're moving, this is an example of collaboration between school districts. And uh, I was at multiple meetings where the, the, the coordinators that are actually working and developing the content says, whoa, we're not sure what we can share or not share. So we actually had to go back to the leadership group and say, we need in writing from you what can be shared so that we feel comfortable for sharing it. So um, that's, that's one example of, of the collaboration. And then they've gone through, they're looking at district level curriculum. They also want to take a look at teacher level resources, meaning what the actual classroom teacher would use. One of the big pieces they wanted to look at was sharing professional development resources. And as you can see, just by the number there, that seemed to be one um, that has hit topic. So that instead of them all going out and recreating the wheel in terms of how do you implement this new initiative, they're, they're starting to share those resources out so people can download them, you know, and change them. And, and it seems, again, it seems like a basic piece, but it really is a huge uh, step forward. In, and I really um, commend uh, the, the folks who are, are engaging in that. And then they're going and doing the same thing with assessment. So all related to this particular initiative, they're all com collaborating on the common core. What you're, what you're not seeing here really is them co-creating. This is really, you know, they're sharing information, they're having that ongoing dialogue, but there's not a lot of co-development going on. And I think particularly that's mostly because this particular group is young in terms of how long they've been in existence, but I would expect that once they get past the sharing stage and feel comfortable with that, the idea of co-developing um, will come into play and, and they'll feel more comfortable with it. So I'm just going to go back to the PowerPoint for just a minute and uh, talk about or and get your feedback and get your feedback that's a, between university and a school. Is it mostly sharing resources? Uh, that's a great uh, question that uh, Jennifer just asked. She said, is there an example uh, between collaboration the university and the school? And there is. And actually, um, let me go to that because that particularly came up when they were creating these new or redefining 40 courses for freshmen and for freshmen and sophomores. There's also another one that we use called a virtual colloquium caboodle. And I'll show you that. That's a type of online uh, learning that we're doing, uh, professional learning, that is really geared towards um, bringing higher ed folks in connection with the K-12 uh, folks, so for professional learning purposes. So what I'm going to do here, and I'm sorry if I'm making you dizzy by scrolling uh, quickly. So one example of that is we had a professor who is uh, widely known in our area um, for who works with uh, technologies is in our ed tech department, uh, Dr. Gary Bitter. And we brought him in to work with teachers and how to use these apps. So the space is both professional learning in, mixed in with collaboration. So he worked with us, provided us resources, and then he came in and did a live session, so he's actually talking to our teachers and our participants uh, via Adobe Connect. Um, actually, I think we used Cauliflower for this, but we're going back to Adobe Connect. Uh, it shared those resources and then provided support along with an expert teacher as teachers took this content and put it into application within their classroom. 
So this is one way um, that we're trying to use this whole environment. Uh, and these were actually uh, uh, opening up past just Arizona too. And it's, it's a new model that we're playing around with and we'll have a full uh, stream of these coming out in the, in the fall around Common Core, but also around a variety of different topics. Very exciting. We're getting really good feedback from the uh, faculty uh, that are sharing, feeling that it's a nice way for them to connect directly to K-12 um, and it not being through the uh, I teach the Arizona, we call it the I teach AZ program, which is our teacher ed program. So that's one way, uh, Jennifer, that they actually reach out and work directly with K-12. Uh, another way would be, oh, you're welcome. Another way um, is that through these courses. So I'm going to show you an example of one of those courses that have been co-developed. Because as I said, one of our needs were this collaborative course development space. And so uh, we have, I'm going to come down here to social studies, uh, but we have this particular project. There were course developers that, um, oh, that's the wrong one, sorry. And made everybody dizzy and took them to the wrong. These are all the environments and workshops and everything that we have within our space. Our end users only see what they belong to. And since I'm the administrator, I see all of these. So um, unfortunately, that's the reason that I get to, to view everything. Uh, it makes for a little long as you're scrolling. But this is a good example of a course that had a variety of people came into it and did the development of the course. So we gave them their space. We created a, a shell, and you can see up at the top, the name of the program is Teaching Foundations Project. Uh, it's a course in development. We had multiple faculty. So this one right here had three, uh, Brooke Simpson, Jeff Bass, Heidi Osler, that actually developed the course. K-12 developers partnering with community college, partnering with the teacher's college, but also we partnered with our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. So we have cross collaboration within the university, but into the K-12 market. And we actually did an outreach to encourage K-12 uh, teachers and um, fo folks within the district office to come in and collaborate with us. What they also did, though, is not only did we have these collaboration in the development of the content, and these, by the way, are, are not set up to be online courses. This is just set up to, to house content that is then taught in a face-to-face -face course in most cases. Um, so we have this cross-collaboration here, K-12 higher ed. We also had then people that are um, that came in and gave feedback. So we had external evaluators and they gave feedback and they were K-12 teachers. They were again community college. We invited external folks that were from outside of ASU and from outside the scope of the project. So what's nice about the Moodle environment outside of the LMS, which is Blackboard, what we use for the college, is that within our space, we can easily provide access to folks. Um, in the university system, it's quite the process uh, to get people access to uh, the system. In this way, we're allowed to do it all within house. And with Moodle, it's easy to teach other people how to use the system, how to enroll people. So it really did make it from being a centrally um, controlled system or managed system that I could give that management out to multiple people, and um, uh, which again is good for collaboration and encourages that um, that sense of ownership that it's not just us ASU making it for them, but it's also you know the K-12 teacher that's involved can produce content and such. So another way that we're uh, looking at collaboration is we have um, school systems that use a comprehensive school reform uh, system called TAP and and they needed a space and this is one way where we're really trying to take Moodle and push it as many directions as we can they needed a space to collaborate with the ASU faculty as well as within themselves to produce examples of what they've done within their classrooms. Oh, and this, for example, I don't have the plug in here. I apologize. But what we just did here is create simple shells where they could, and I, that's what we call it within the course, but with a course with a template, and they could upload their content into it. Here they're talking about instructional strategies that they used. Here's some videos. Now they can develop the PowerPoint, which is their data. 
and then these are searchable by everybody else within the state who might be using a similar concept. So the idea here is we're trying to get them in co-collaborating in the production of instructional resource sets, kind of um, that can be used uh, can be used cross state uh, and such. So. We're, we're trying to push the limits, and, and I have to tell you, I'm so excited about iMoot. One of the things is is I'm learning so much because I'm, I'm a relative newbie compared to most of you, I think, to what Moodle can do. And I'm so excited to see all the different ways that it's being used so we can start incorporating those um, and, and hearing from you what other collaboration tools that you're working on. One one last piece, and I, and I think I'm just about out of time. Um, in terms of collaboration, we do a lot of um, professional development, professional learning within our grant. And so we've needed a system where we can collaborate with the K-12 districts. What are their needs in terms of professional development? Um, who do they have that's an expert because they're trying to build capacity? Have them develop basic content. Then we bring in instructional designers and working with the instructional designers and how do we develop modules within, again, we're using within Moodle so that they can, um, so that they can easily access that content. Um, and so I see that the nice thing that Moodle offers us is that so many different people can come in from so many different places uh, to help produce that content, both uh, we're using folks across the country. So this is not a rocket science piece of online professional development here. It's, um, you know, we've taken a face-to-face, -face, we've worked with people to make it as easy as we can, low bandwidth, that's really important to us. Um, they're using different strategies. They're using a program called Captivate to try to increase some of the interactivity with the content that's lost when you don't have somebody standing in front of you. So there's, um, formative assessments, those kinds of things. But the whole development here is quite collaborative in that it's, it's going all the way from K-12, from testing to uh, ASU faculty for content, but then out to instructional designers around the country for production. Um, and we're just, we know that we're just scratching the surface. And that's why, you know, when I saw the advertisement for iMood, I said, wow, so here's a chance for me to get this idea out there that's collaborative in nature in terms of how we've even put it together, but to learn more from the community about what we can do to, to make it even more useful for our clientele. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint now. Um, and so, so this is, we're just going through. So anyway, variations, back to the variations on it, on the collaboration. Let's see. Let's see if I can get to the right one. Let's see. Oh, this is the right one. So uh, additional features. Um, and these are things that we're working towards. We've been sort of hemmed in in terms of development based on some technical issues that we've resolved. So we have a, um, we're going to start hosting PD collaboratively with districts. We have a registration system. We're trying to look a lot more from Oh, uh, thank you, Shane. We're trying to look a lot more on interactivity and working with all of our collaborators on developing that. We've actually created a media studio so everyone can come in in terms of content to help teach them how to push past a basic static PowerPoint and make it more uh, interactive. We're also looking for tools for single sign-on access, so um, we're always looking out how we can re reach out for that. We're going to be an entry point for a data dashboard that's being designed, um, and we're working with, uh, in Arizona State University, we have a new Center for Gaming and um, Impact headed by Dr. Shasha Barab, and we're working with him on some gamification of all this, and saw a great session on the gamification of Moodle. I'm quite excited about that. Um, so anyway, uh, th this is really what we're trying to do. Jennifer, absolutely. Anybody has ideas, wants to continue for additional information? Yeah, exciting about Sasha. It's uh, been real exciting working with him and, and hearing what he's got going. Um, he's a big partnership with the Teachers College. And so um, we really are, are trying to push that collaboration. But I'll tell you, a, a really a frustration for me is engaging 
the K-12 system, systems more and that, and it's a cultural shift for them. And so really trying to help them make that culture shift. Uh, you know, I have to tell you really quick that a, a really good win for us is we had a district who didn't want to have anything to do with it, the collaborating online, they didn't need it, no need, and such and such. And then I got a call, I got an email, please help us. And I actually went in and talked to associate superintendent, which is the second in command in a, a United States uh, school system district saying we need a space for 75 teachers to collaborate over the summer on creating content. Can you create a community for us? And, and so uh, we've done just that. So, you know, it's a cultural shift for folks and the collaboration. Somebody pointed that out earlier. I think it might have been Jennifer or, or somebody. Um, but we really are trying and uh, it, it need more tools. We, we know we need more tools. and. Um, I think I, I posted that in the discussion board within my course shell in terms of uh, what kind of tools are you using, are you building into um, uh, for, um, for encouraging that collaboration, uh, anything, any web 2.0 tools that you are engaging. In our system, we have a, a, a wiki and a blog block within Moodle that is poor, <laughs> so we don't we don't use them. And I'm sure it's just because it's something somebody put into our Moodle installation long ago, and it's never been developed out further. So I, I am looking for those kinds of pieces in terms of what are what are the new best ways of using Moodle and new functionalities. So I, I think that's really, that's a good tour. I'm sorry I had so many technical uh, issues with that. Um, if there's anything else specifically that you want to see that uh, I can answer your questions for, I, I think Shane is uh, the person who's my, I'm not sure that, is that Shane, are you the person who's the? I, I can be, whatever that is. <laughs> Oh, no, I just didn't know. I mean, how do we do the Q and A? Is it just a matter of everybody just um, you yeah, know, posting either, their questions auditorily, or do they do it through the typing? Uh, yeah, they can do it either. They can type in questions in this chat. We can even hand the microphones over to everybody if you like. Okay. Well, let's let's see if we can hear somebody else's voice besides my own. <laughs> okay. Just Have we had anyone? There you go. So if anybody has any any questions or any any tools or strategies they want to share about supporting collaboration, we'd be glad to hear them. If you don't feel like talking, that's fine. You could uh, type it into the the question space. Hello? Let's see. Uh, if you don't feel yes, like talking, my email. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, this is Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Okay, sorry, I didn't know if you could hear me or not. Um, I think this is amazing and 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 fantastic and 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 mind blowing. And I really um, I guess the first thing was to confirm your email address so I can get more information on this. Is it Heidi C at ASU dot edu? Yes, that's it. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, the other thing was um, you integrated Drupal into Moodle. Was that um, a very high-tech, difficult thing to do, or is it um, <laughs> something anybody could do? Uh, well, uh, I think somebody. Well, I think somebody in Drupal. Oh, I think I'm, oh, talking, I think back I'm to talking back to myself. Somebody in Drupal. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Is that better? I think somebody within Drupal uh, who has a basic Drupal knowledge could do it. I don't do it personally myself. We have programmers that um, do the, the mashup and the programming for us. Actually, we have one Drupal guy, and he's actually the main Drupal guy for Arizona State University, so we're lucky to have him on iProject. So um, with the wraparound, it probably is. 
uh, you know, we are very open to if somebody's interested in the process to collaborating with you in that, at least connecting the programmer to whoever would be doing the installation just to walk them through what it might look like. So if somebody is interested in that, you know, you just have to let me know. So in terms of can we help you integrate Drupal, um, we could certainly help you walk through the process. We're not even opposed to if you wanted to take a look at, at sharing our code as well. So we, we have the system in terms of an installation if you wanted to do something similar. Um, that's the Drupal wrap around the Moodle. That's certainly conversations we can have. Much of what we've done has been developed through the U.S. Department of Education grant. So uh, a lot of that just by the nature of the funding um, we can make available to others. Okay, I see a question from Teresa. How do you use Google Apps in this Moodle environment? So basically, uh, when I'm talking with folks on the different levels of collaboration, we really use it in the Google Apps in terms of if they want to co-develop a particular document, then we simply include that link out to that document within either the Moodle space itself or within a particular forum um, sharing system. We do have a couple sites that have Google interactive Google sites connected to them, and um, that has worked out relatively well. Um, when you start getting into the Google Apps, then you really do have to make sure that they have the understanding of those two different technologies, which I'm sure you know. We develop a lot of Camtasia videos to show them how to go back and forth between environments um, and also how to use those. We put those all in that same space of the ORC so they have them. So it's really a, a connecting out to Google. Uh, we use a lot of Google Forms. Wow, uh, I don't know what we did before that. So we use a lot of Google Forms. That way we can collect the data co collaboratively and share it so everybody has access to it. Unlike when we use SurveyMonkey, great product, but unlike when we use it, it's limited to who can see the data. So in terms of collaborative data collection, we use Google Forms and Google Spreadsheets a lot. So Leslie's asking if I know about uh, the integration with Google Apps. Leslie, I'm not sure if you're meaning, are you talking specific or are you talking about some of the ideas that I was just thinking about? Oh, she's saying, Leslie's saying there's a plugin. I didn't know about that. So when we upgrade to 2.0, oh, excellent. Thank you for sharing. No, I'm sure that'll make a big difference. And anything that can make it more seamless, when you have resistant users, and not resistant because they don't like it, resistant because they're, it's unknown to them, the better we can integrate it, the better off we are. All right, Leslie, thanks for the advice on waiting for the 2.0. I'm adding that to my list. I have a list of everything I want to do once we uh, migrate to 2.0. Any other questions or, or ideas or anything you guys want to share? Uh, in terms of do we have any papers written on it, uh, no. Um, while I have my, uh, my PhD in Instructional Design and Technology, I've been out of the academic side of things of writing and actually looking for partners within the teacher's college to do some actual research. To me, it's just amazing the amount of data that we have and can collect and the, the way that we can actually do different interventions or different approaches to it um, would be quite exciting. I have put in for a couple of conferences, um, but haven't gotten anything uh, written up like a white paper or anything like that. Um, I am open to if somebody's looking at research in this area. Again, when I did my dissertation, I used Moodle. 
uh, for online PD, which is what my dissertation was in, because of the wealth of data you can collect. So if anybody is interested in that, I'd be glad to have a conversation with you about what that might look like. Oh, I see what you're saying, Jennifer. Um, getting some ideas on how you get started. Um, that's certainly something that we could work on, but in particular, Jennifer, if you want to, we can have a conversation or we can Skype. Um, I'd be glad to to talk to anybody about what we've done, lessons we've learned, um, and then certainly uh, we can all get better. I know when I was in the classroom teacher teaching second grade, you know, you have one idea and you take it to your team members and your idea gets much better, which already has because I've learned a couple great ideas from you guys today. So. Um, I uh, would be very glad to have discussions both from the technical side of Drupal and Moodle mashup, but also from the process. And it's a cultural shift. Uh, that's the big thing is that you can, you can uh, sort of like the Kevin Cosner builder, you can build the field and that they will come. That's not necessarily the truth. You can build an environment, but you have to, over time, build the relationships with people to trust you that they can come there to collaborate. And, uh, and we're starting to get there, as my illustration about that one associate superintendent who recently called or, or emailed me and asked for help. So um, uh, we're, we're starting to build those relationships and getting people to think outside of the box. Other ideas, questions to share? This chat I'm going to be able to refer back to, which is great. You, are, you guys are very welcome. It's an exciting opportunity. My first iMoot ever. So I appreciate you uh, being patient with me and getting my time messed up. <laughs> oh, I see an idea being shared by Trish. Thank you, Trish. Oh, interesting, with the high school collaboration. She, Trish, you mentioned, mentioned parents. That's one area that actually we're starting to investigate as a partnership with ASU with a healthcare provider is how do we provide um, high quality content, professional learning content collaboratively that fits K-12 teachers but comes from the healthcare provider as well from the institutions within the university. So we're working on a set of modules that are for parents, but also for coaches. So we're trying to see how do we uh, support that collaboration um, with the whole parent side, too. Yeah, it's interesting uh, that shared content that you're talking about, Trish, that we've had to go through just in terms, I showed you the one um, virtual colloquium with Dr. Gary Bitter and the content. We've had to go through our legal department at the university to have people release the content um, that, they, that they put there so that we can use it in multiple ways. So you definitely have the legal issues of um, intellectual property, which is huge in, in the world of the university not thought of quite as much in the K-12 world, but um, we are working on, you know, what is the intellectual property, who does it belong to or co-belong to, and then how do you make sure you get the credit to those folks. I like the idea, Martin, of the, the taster sessions. It, that is another side to this that we've used is for the follow-up. Um, we all know within K-12 systems we've done too much of the one-shot PD and we're really trying to encourage folks to use this space as for follow-up discussions but as well as to continue to access to the content. Um, and again with multiple people adding content. I think that's the great thing about Moodle that gets us away from a traditional webmaster model is that in Moodle anybody can add the content. Um, easily um, and we can still use it in the controlled environment that we have within the logon space. So Jennifer, I don't know if uh, in the terms of the dissertation if you're talking about Martin, 
you're talking about mine, mine's on online um, levels of interaction and in online professional development. Um, I think if you go to Amazon, that if you Google that, something comes up. It's just the dissertation itself. It's also in the Library of Congress, so you can find it there. Um, interesting information. It's really the content that mattered, not so much as the uh, facilitation if the content uh, was dynamic, was the overall um, findings there. But be glad to talk that talk to you about that. If you can't find it, Jennifer, let me know. Um, I can certainly guide you guide you to that. And then if you find it and want to discuss it, let me know. I'd be glad to do that as well. Uh, in terms of continuing the conversation, I did in the in the session um, in my session within the the course session. I've included uh, links out to the front end of the ORC. It is membership only, so you can't actually get into it, but there is some information there. We do have a uh, video there, an interactive video, so you can walk through and get um, a general feel for it. But uh, if anybody wants to Skype or anything, I'd be glad to arrange a time and give them a, a tour, a more detailed tour of some of the different aspects. Um, of what we've gone through and 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 what and where we're going to and what's currently there. So Leslie or Martin or and Jennifer, I'm just trying to think, look back and who else is is here? Teresa, I really pre Anna. Thank you so much for. Being here, Shane, thank you for being the host. Sorry I was late. Oh, and Dana, thank you. You're very, you're very welcome. Please continue to post inside the discussion board. I'm so excited to have a group of people to, to share this with who, uh, who uh, has the same passion for some of these things that we do in terms of collaboration and making it uh, easy access and beneficial. So um, I'm here. I can stay here as long as i um, until Shane kicks me off. I'm not sure at what time that happens. Um, but uh, thank you, Martin. Appreciate that. Hey, Heidi. Well, let me let me just say, um, just on behalf of the whole IMEET team, thank you very much for, for coming in and sharing your time with us. And um, I know it was obviously a bit rushed getting in, but I think everyone's glad you, glad you made it. Um, you're most welcome to keep chatting away. I'll stop the recording, but you're welcome to keep talking and using the chat. Um, go for it. Okay. Thank you, Shane.